What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to 2023. My first upload of the new year. I've been slacking, getting content out. I do apologize. But today's a good one. We are taking the 5th gen up to MDDP or Mark Decola diesel performance up in Butler, Pennsylvania to get some transmission work here. 5th gen here of course does have the dreaded 68 RFE which tends to not like when you put a little bit of power to it. So not saying this truck is built at all. It is just simple delete and tune with a switch on the fly shifter for five different tunes. Tune one being 30 horsepower, tune five being up to 200 horsepower. Back in September of 2022, we had some transmission issues, and that is the whole point of this video. We're trying to address those issues. So either way, like I said, new video, first video of the new year, we probably need ourselves a little 2023 cold start because like, it's Pennsylvania, it's like 30 degrees. The music to my ears, probably not so much to my neighbors, but welcome to 2023, guys. Me or does it sound like an airplane's about to take off? Let's go. Alrighty, so first off, I don't know what the audio or video is gonna look like. I'm shooting for a brand new GoPro I just bought and I honestly haven't tested it out yet. So apologize if the audio sucks. I will get like an external mic for the GoPro. I know they make them. Apologize if the video quality sucks. I will do what I can in the next couple videos to fix the issue so this is kind of like a guinea pig video i bought the gopro because my large camera that i generally film with does not fit inside my corvette and honestly it doesn't fit much in here if i'm filming while driving and also it's dangerous holding that thing so now i can focus on the road don't have to hold a camera and i got a gopro right there so either way getting back into the actual video we're taking this truck up to MDDP, Mark Decola Diesel Performance, to get some trans work done. Back in August, driving home from vacation, coming through Washington, D.C. at 80 miles per hour, the trans shifts me down into fourth gear, locks me out of fifth and sixth, throws an engine code. I made my way over to the side of the road, truck in fourth gear, even when I stopped. Tried to drive again, truck in fourth gear, put the truck in park, put it back in drive, truck still in fourth gear, shut it off, cycled the truck, I guess. And then I finally had access to all six gears, engine light still on, made my way to an advance to borrow a code reader, read the code PO765 for shift solenoid D, cleared the code, drove home, and honestly, it hasn't done it since. I'm five, six months into after this incident happened, never had the incident happen again. I'm five, 6,000 miles into the truck since that happened, and once again, still hasn't happened. So you could say maybe it was a fluke, and maybe I'm lucky and honestly reading Facebook groups and everything like that it is a fairly common occurrence with these trucks especially if you are in cruise control which I was in cruise control and like I said it hasn't happened since and I've been towing ever since and I haven't had any problem but since it happened I figured it would probably be a good idea to spend a little bit of money to beef up the stock 68 versus doing nothing about it and then you know in three four months or something like that blowing the trans and then having to spend ten or twelve thousand dollars for a built trans so the whole purpose of today is to take the truck up we're getting all rev max billet parts on the truck well in the trans to hopefully prolong the life of the stock 68 with a little bit of juice that we have added with the tunes on the truck Real quick, what we're doing, the, the code call for shift solenoid D from RevMax. Uh, RevMax makes a lot of really good 68 RFE parts. I am buying a whole new shift solenoid pack since the trans is gonna be open, might as well put a shift solenoid pack in. We did do a billet valve body. So that is one of the things that happens to the 68 with too much line pressure and whatnot. It pretty much melts the stock valve bodies. They leak a deep transmission pan. So I think if I'm not mistaken, this, the new transmission pan will hold about four more quarts of oil, which would obviously help for cooling and whatnot. We do have a thermal bypass going in, which will keep the trans a little bit more on the cold side so it doesn't get too hot. I've monitored my coolant temp, trans temp, oil temp, and oil pressure since owning this truck brand new. I know I have 22,500 and some miles on it. Coolant temp and oil temp are always around like 186 and trans temp is always at like, like 168. And so I monitor that stuff. I've never had the trans get very hot except for when I was down on 
vacation at the beach in four wheel drive for like an hour. The trans did get over 200 degrees a few times, but supposedly with the the trans cooler from RevMax, the trans will now not get like over 150 degrees. So we will comment on that once the parts are installed and we're you know home with the truck. Either way, we're doing that. We're doing new screw on filters. The oil pan will now have a drain plug so that way we can actually change the fluid when we want to. Yep, so RevMax Zero Flex billet high performance towing HD valve body. We're doing the 68 RFE Zero Stat transmission cooler. So that's cool. The deep aluminum transmission pan, new OEM solenoid pack assembly for the 68, spin on filters, uh, screw st steel upgrade, uh, transmission filter service kit, uh, obviously some AMSOIL ATF, and I guess that's about it. So not a whole lot of parts, but that's what I'm saying. So spending about $2,500 in parts and you know hopefully getting a lot more longevity out of my stock 68 i think is worth it hopefully instead of just spending the 10 or 12 grand buying a completely new trans so i'm going to pull over here in one second and show you guys like the current trans pan and stuff like that i think that's the only thing you're really going to be able to tell that's different but i do want to get you a quick before and after all right guys so nothing fancy crazy i would crawl on the ground but you can see there's like literally salt everywhere. Nothing fancy to look at. Just the OEM transmission pan. Like I said, nothing crazy whatsoever, but I just wanted to give you guys a good before. I just wanted to give you guys a good before because when we're done, I'll show you guys what the new one looks like from RevMax because it should look a little cooler than what the OEM one does look like. 2021 Ram 2500 in the shop. Pan has been removed, filters out, and valve body removed because we will be replacing this valve body with a built one. For now, Cole's just letting all the fluid drain out of this thing to make sure we have all the old fluid out before we put fresh stuff in. Right here is the aftermarket valve body built by RevMax. So this thing is going to give the 68 a little more potential. Advantages to this valve body is first going to be a crisper shifting setup. Uh, the classic three to four shift on the 68 is not the nicest, so this does clean that up a little bit. They rate this as their towing slash daily driver valve body. So we're basically addressing the common valve body issues that the stock 68 has. So this means perfectly flat machine plates. We're trying to eliminate leaks between passages within the valve body by going to thicker materials and more precision ground. We will also be doing the thermostat bypass, which is going to eliminate the problematic thermostat. Slight change of plans on that. We actually received a 2018 solenoid pack, which is already packed up, headed to RevMax. This is the 19 version that has this plug coming off it with two wires. So those are not interchangeable solenoid packs. So we're gonna wait, see until we get that one back and the new one in from RevMax. Built RevMax valve body is ready to make its home into the Ram. The correct new solenoid pack was overnighted to us. So this baby is ready to go. We did in the meantime, get the thermal bypass installed. So now we are free flowing through there. We got out as much fluid as we can. This thing has had almost a full 24 hours of drain out, including that line up front there from the cooler when we did the thermal bypass. Jordan is working on getting all the valve body bolts snug up in there, and then we'll actually go ahead and start doing the new torque sequence. All right, guys, so literally, I'm gonna go on this side because it is a little bit, you can see a little bit more, but under the truck, here we go. Here is your thermal bypass from RevMax and your baller ass pan. That is a deep transmission pan on the other side. You probably can't see on this side, but on the other side, there's actually a drain plug where the OEM pan does not have a drain plug because Ram is stupid. Here's your drain plug, here's your RevMax pan, and in size comparison, where's my old pan? There she is, so not very deep or anything at all. The RevMax pan, that's, that's a, uh, this is actually the old solenoid pack. But the deep thermal pan from RevMax is actually, if I'm not mistaken, it takes four more quarts of oil, well, of transmission fluid, than the OEM one does. Alrighty guys, so got the truck back from Mark Cola. Super quick installation in general. I think they have like four or five labor hours on my invoice. 
dropped the truck off Wednesday night. They worked on it Thursday and Friday and picked the truck back up on Friday. Can't really say I feel a whole lot different because I can't really get on the truck at all. It is in a relearn and they told me to do a relearn for 500 miles and I honestly, I got about 100 miles on it and that's it so far. So can't really tell for certain or for sure that this thing is awesome and it you know, improves my driving quality that much over what it was OEM. However, driving like my grandma stole the truck, it does seem very smooth. Very smooth shift points, very accurate, very nice downshifts. However, once again, I can't get onto this thing, so I haven't really been driving hard at all to feel what the difference ends up being. We obviously haven't towed yet or nothing like that. The only big noticeable difference would be the transmission temp with the new thermal bypass from RevMax. The trans, I have not seen it heat up over 118 degrees so far, and if you remember, this trans used to run pretty steady at like a buck 68. 168 used to be very normal, very common for this transmission. Now, 118 is the most I have seen it. Now, ironically and strangely enough, on my way home from Mark Decula's, maybe about 50 miles, it never got over 105 degrees. And then the very next day driving the truck, so which would have been like yesterday, I saw it heat up to like 114. And then like today, 118 is about the max. So I don't know if it takes a while to like kick in, get used to it, do something, but like it is kind of strange. Like it was 105 maxed out on my way home from the coolers now to like a buck 18. So either way, the only time's going to tell how all the RevMax parts did. I'll do like a six month review or something like that after actually being able to get on the truck and do some launches and be kind of hard and aggressive on it to see, you know, how it changed everything to see how the trans temp holds up. Now, once again, it's winter time, so I can't imagine the trans getting too, too hot in general. So in a couple months, once it's like dead nut summer, I'll be able to give you guys some pretty good clips of how this thing is when it is actually warm outside and going to work. So overall, they said the installation went fairly well. No issues, nothing broken looking like in the in the trans prior. Uh, they said the fluid was a pretty decent color. Um, no crazy metal shavings or anything of the sort. So to be honest, the trans was, you know, healthy. So I probably didn't need to, you know, spend the money on all the RevMax parts to do what I just did. However, in my eyes, it's like preventative maintenance, if you will, and it's just a peace of mind since I have a deleted truck and on a 68 and those 68s are weak. It's just like a peace of mind to me knowing that like I should be pretty safe now for a long, long time. So, And of course, as always, with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. All of a sudden, it's like starting a snow rain type deal. I want to go home and wash the truck, but that's all I got for you guys right now. So. I know not a crazy exciting video because I did not do the work myself and I can't show you guys like the internals and everything like that, which I wish I could have. Once again, I probably would have attempted this myself if I had a garage that my truck fit into and you know, like I had the time to do it. So now, you know, working a full-time job and whatnot, I trusted the professionals over at MDDP. So uh, shout out to those guys for getting it done. Uh, those guys are awesome as always. They're in Butler, Pennsylvania. If you have any diesel truck needs, Shout out to RevMax. Now, obviously I didn't get anything for free. I paid for everything. Their parts came highly recommended by a lot of people in the Cummins community. So like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe, join the family, join the Cummins content, and I'll see y'all guys next week. Peace.